One of the anxiety is not so much what's happening up in here, but here in your heart. A study here at Stanford shows that controlling your heartbeat could lead to you being less anxious and stressed. Carl, tell me, what motivated you to conduct this study? Right, uh, I'm not a cardiologist. I am a psychiatrist, though, and, and my inspiration for this came from my psychiatry training. And what I was taught, along with the other psychiatry residents, was there was a very interesting correlation between patients who have panic disorder and people who have primary cardiac problems, heart problems. And as a resident, when I was learning about this, that piqued my interest. So what did you find out? Well, the first question we had to ask was, does the mouse seem to care that its heart is beating faster? And what we found was the mouse didn't care. If we just paced the heart faster, but in a neutral setting, a setting that was not dangerous, uh, and even Not in, intimidating. Not intimidating, exactly. The mouse didn't change its behavior. It didn't appear to care, but where we did see an effect was when we put the mouse into an open field. That's when you become prey if you're a mouse. And so they, when they're in an open area, they really hug the corners and the walls. Then when we paced the heart, it made the mouse more anxious-like in its behavior. It made it hug the walls and the corners more than it was doing before. And so that gave us a clue that the brain's perception of the environment matter, but that the rate of the heart beating itself could affect the internal state and the behavior of the animal subject. The brain can see, the brain can perceive, it can understand the context. If it sees that there's a dangerous situation, it indeed does tell the heart to beat faster. But the question we were coming at in the study is, does it matter for the emotional state, for the internal state that the heart's beating faster? We then asked, well, okay, how does the heart communicate back to the brain? We mapped out all the brain regions that were changed in their activity by the pacing of the heart. And we were able to trace the activity all the way up to one of these interesting structures called the insula or the insular cortex. And this is a part of our brain that receives that information that's propagating back from the body and probably plays a role in implementing the behavioral changes. So how do you translate these results in mice to humans? How is it useful, these results, the study? Well, uh, clinically, this comes up all the time. So we very often see patients who have elevated heart rates and anxiety syndromes. So we can give uh, benzodiazepines, which are anti-anxiety medications, for example. They sure work, but they have some side effects. They slow cognition, they can be sedating, they can be addictive. But that's how we treat anxiety most effectively these days. Now, looking at this, we can say, well, okay, what about controlling the heart rate? Maybe we can see the heart and bodily, bodily signals in general as treatment targets in psychiatry. So I kind of see a twinkle in your eye when you say, this is great, this is cool, because you can now look at the heart and controlling the heartbeat to treat any kind of psychiatric disorder or illness. So much of psychiatry are emotions that come up at the wrong time, that are too strong, that we feel in the body. Now that we have a, a, a clue that some of these may be causal in helping to set the state, it gives us a whole new array of potential treatment uh, approaches. To see it all come together, medicine, the neuroscience, the technology, it's a, one of those moments that really makes doing science fun.